This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Grab your journal and all your supplies, it's time to get set up for July. Hi, it's Erin, and yes, I've joined the ranks of those obsessed with Ferris Wheel Press inks. I'm getting right outside of my pastel tones comfort zone today with something a little bit more light academia. This is my first monthly setup in my new notebook from Kuma Stationery and Crafts, which I'm so excited about. And it was also the first live stream that I sketched out and mood boarded with my channel members, which was also so much fun. They actually helped me pick the quote for this quote page, which is a quote from Coco Chanel. You'll see it come together on the left side as we go through, but I'm going to be sticking all of the words for this over the top of another piece of paper. So rather than put the lettering directly on the page, I'm using one of these scrap envelopes that I just have heaps of kicking around, lettering onto that in Instead, and then I'm going to cut out around the lettering and use them kind of like stickers. This is a really great system if you have trouble getting your lettering in the center of the page. You can just letter on a piece of whatever, cut out around it, and then stick it in the middle of the page and you'll never go wrong. I'm using a very small round brush for all of my lettering and also some line work in this setup, along with the Workshop Wishes ink from Ferris Wool Press that you saw earlier. I'm also going to use it with some stamps and I have a marker from the Pentel brush sign range that is also very similar in colour, so I'll use that sometimes too, just when I get a bit lazy. As always, there are links to everything I'm using in the description if it can be linked to, so if you would like to get your hands on anything, please feel free to have a scroll down there and don't forget to check out my discount codes as well because I might even be able to save you a little bit of money. Now about this quote, this one is a little bit longer than I typically like to have in my journal and I do usually go more towards Erin please stop procrastinating kind of quotes because that's a thing that I kind of do, but I've gone with this one, it was a suggestion from one of my lovely channel members and it's such a good match for this theme. The quote is, I consider lace to be one of the prettiest imitations ever made of the fantasy of nature from Coco Chanel. And just in case you're wondering why I'm getting this variation in the shade of the letters as I stamp, it's because I haven't cleaned my stamps in a while. Don't be like me, clean your stamps. But I actually kind of like how it came out, so that's always nice, a happy accident. Now that I have all of the elements of this quote page ready to go, it's time to stick down the background and run out of glue tape. And that beautiful lace printed background I just thought would be perfect to kind of decorate a page without me really having to try. And you could letter directly onto it in black or something like that. I wanted to keep away from black as much as I could in this setup. I will use a black fine liner for some lines later on, but I wanted to stay away from dark heavy kind of things for this one. I wanted it to feel very light and pretty while still being in that kind of neutral color family. Brown and beige is really not my wheelhouse, but I had a lot of brown and beige stationery that I'd accumulated, and I was like, this is your opportunity to challenge yourself, Erin, and try and make something very pretty out of it. And I think I did pretty well. We're moving on to the cover page on the right side now, and if you haven't tried your calligraphy inks with stamps, this is your sign to do it. It works great. Just about everything that I'm using on this page is going to be from the washi tape shop, from that stamp to the washi tape that I've just laid down to these sections of PET tape that I'm now cutting away the middle of. Just about everything here is going to be from the washi tape shop. What can I say? They just make the best stuff. And if you want to get 10% off at the washi tape shop, you can use my code ErinSmith10 and you're welcome for the savings. This is a big old mishmash of tapes and stickers. I'm using the Florentia PET tape, which is gorgeous. The birds and the floral accents are from the Vintage Botanicals washi tape sticker set. And the brown text washi tape that looks like it's straight out of a botanical textbook is from the Petals and Parchment set as well. These very fine laser cut lace uh, doily kind of, I don't know what to call these. Anyway, they really inspired this whole layout. I had these and I thought maybe I should try and make some use of them. I found them a little bit tricky to work out how to stick them into my journal. I've ended up going with a paintbrush and some PVA glue, but I think if you had a glue pen, which I currently don't own a glue pen, but I really want one, that would probably be a better way to do this. 
I've been so grateful to my bullet journal lately because of how it helps me balance my work, my personal life, and this very YouTube channel, which has become a pretty amazing little side hustle for me. Which brings me to the sponsor of today's video, Skillshare. Skillshare is not just for artistic and creative pursuits. You can also use Skillshare to level up your career, learn how to freelance effectively, or like me, learn how to start a side hustle of your own. Most people who start a side hustle do so alongside regular employment. I'm self-employed, so if I'm not careful, I can end up with no structure in my day, in my week, in my month, like all year. My journal helps a lot to keep things organized, but I know I could do better. So I've jumped into Skillshare's curated list of classes on productivity, and this one here jumped out at me. It's called Productivity for Creators, Systems, Organization, and Workflow with teacher Ali Abdal. I think anyone who works as a doctor and also runs a wildly successful YouTube channel on the side has proven themselves to be all over the productivity game. This class has sections on staying consistent, not running out of ideas, dealing with failure, and a very interesting part about the power of productive procrastination, which blew my mind. I have this whole Millinote system now that's full of ideas, it's got my video schedule on it, and I have task lists for each one, so I'm always on top of things. The first 1,000 people to use my link in the description can explore the entire Skillshare library for free for one month. Whether you want to learn a new skill, pick up a new hobby, or completely redefine what work means to you. Huge thanks to Skillshare for helping me learn how to navigate this new dual career life I'm leading and also for sponsoring this video. Onward to the calendar spread and something that we've been discussing in the channel members discord recently is using colors for the boxes and the kind of functional parts of your layout and I thought yeah I'm gonna use colors and so I grabbed my brush sign pen and completely trashed my calendar spread. It kind of bled under the ruler and I was trying not to damage the brush tip of the pen so I wasn't going against the ruler very firmly and so I was slipping a lot and it just wasn't going well but lucky for me I have this Rhodia dot grid pack of paper that I use for other stuff in my life so I've ripped a page out of that and I'm borrowing it rather than taking a page out of my journal because this is 80 GSM so it's nice and thin it's still going to cover the lines enough that they're not obvious anymore without bulking up the page too much it is a very slightly different white to the white of the journal pages that's not really going to bother me I'm just happy that I could kind of fix this sort of ugly calendar that I was ending up with here. I do absolutely love this Rhodia pad though. I use it a lot for my photography work where I write shot lists on it and stuff like that. It's kind of funny how once you go dot grid, you can really struggle to go back to lined notebooks. I wanted this calendar to have lots of negative space around it and to look kind of dainty and fine. So I made the boxes kind of small. They are three spaces tall by four spaces wide. And I ended up using a Pigma Micron 03 instead of a colored marker. And now we decorate. This decoration style is one of my absolute favorites. It hugs the design of the calendar while still leaving quite a bit of negative space on the page, but it felt a bit too empty. So I'm just jumping back in with my ink and my fine brush and adding a freehand border around the outside. Then all we need is numbers for each day on the calendar and we can carry on to the next spread. Felt like we needed a bird represented on the right side so I've just added one here and then we're going to turn over and this is going to be my one line a day page which I've been doing in the form of kind of a, an extended project poem over the month. It's not ending up very pretty at the end of the month but it is representative much more of how I'm feeling day to day than how I'm actually what I'm doing you know. I'm keeping the decoration quite small and just to the top and bottom of the page because I need space to put 31 lines of poetry here. So I needed to make sure there was a lot of room for that in the middle. And I'm adding some of these beautiful stamps from Notebook Therapy. This is the Vintage Rose set. This cloche and rose combo is one of my favorites ever.
The facing page is an old favorite of mine, but I didn't actually include it in my Jude spreads, and then I sort of missed it. It's my goals, musings, and favorites page. Musings is kind of just my term for brain dump because I don't like how brain dump sounds, so it's sort of an anything goes kind of a section. It's context sensitive, as they said in Conker's Bad Fur Day. And of course, the goals section is for breaking down my yearly goals into smaller, more achievable monthly portions, while the favorites section is for whatever I'm into at the time. So that could be music, TV shows, uh, podcasts, YouTube channels, food, colors, particular kinds of clothing, everything. While I'm jumping backwards and forwards between these two pages, I just wanted to ask if you're enjoying the video, would you mind hitting that like button down below? And if you haven't been here before and you're having a good time, maybe consider hitting subscribe. I do also have channel memberships with two different tiers if you'd like to support me a little bit further. There's some more information on those if you hit the join button that's beside my channel name down below. I also like to do two live streams every month where we set up the rest of my weekly spreads for my journal. So we'll do the first one together in this video and then the others we'll set up on a live stream and we get to hang out in real time and we can journal together and it's really fun. But if you're not subscribed or following me on Instagram, you might not hear about them. So just wanted to let you know about that so that we can remedy that situation if that's something you might be into. As we're finishing up this spread and turning over to the next one, the one on the left page is going to be my habit tracker, but I hadn't quite worked out how I wanted to approach it yet. So I've jumped straight into the right page, which is my mood tracker. And it's inspired by this little paper cutout heart on the left side that has lots of little roses inside a general overall heart shape. I thought it was so cute and I thought I could make a mood tracker out of that. So the way this will work is I'll have a rose for every day of the month. There'll be 31 all up and I will color in one of these roses every day. I'm using a Pilot Fudomasake brush pen to do this. I believe the color is called sepia and I actually made this into a printable, which you can grab on my Etsy store if you'd like to. Or if you're one of my channel members, you can download from the community tab on my channel for free. I also made 28 day and 30 day versions of this. So you don't necessarily have to use it for 31 day months like July. You can use it in any month in any year that you like. I absolutely love an illustrative mood tracker. So I'm really happy that I get to share this one with you guys. Please excuse the sudden lighting change. I had to switch on some lights because it was getting very dark in my office and I only had one day to set this up. Usually for a plan with me, I'll take my time over a few days, but I couldn't in this instance, unfortunately. We're tackling this habit tracker and I've ended up drawing out my calendars on the spare paper from where I fixed the calendar spread earlier. I'd been planning to thermal print my calendars like I usually do with the Fomemo M02 mini printer, but that calendar takes up a little bit of space and this one I wanted to be quite small and dainty. So I thought hand drawing them might be the way to go. And once again, I'm gonna be layering them over a printed piece of lacy kind of paper. So I wanted them to stand out from the background, which is why I'm doing them on separate paper so that they can have that white background to really delineate them from the rest of the page. The 31st of July falls on a Monday, so it kind of gets its own row and I'd put it at the bottom of these calendars for now, but you'll see later on when I'm sticking them down that actually made them not totally fit the way I wanted them to. So I ended up cutting that bottom part off and just moving the 31 up to the top row of the calendar. And that worked much better for me in this instance. Also, I am completely obsessed with this Florentia wide PET tape. So I'm trying to make sure that I have a little bit of it represented on every single page, even if it's just a tiny pop. I realized at this point when I cut out those habit tracker calendars that I didn't actually leave myself any space to put the name of each habit above them, which was kind of a bit of a rookie error. So I'm just adding those separately again on the same paper. I lettered them with the brush sign pen and I'm leaving one extra at the bottom because I am setting this up quite early in June and I don't know necessarily exactly if I'm gonna need all of these habits. So I'm leaving myself one extra so I can be flexible about that when the time actually comes to use it. Now that I know what my habit tracker page looks like, I can decorate accordingly around the mood tracker on the other side. So because there's quite a lot going on on the left page, I don't wanna to put too much here. And also it's gonna be a lot once the mood tracker is all colored in, but I always still want decoration. So we're just gonna take it easy a little bit here on this one.
This pair are probably the most utilitarian spreads in the whole setup, and I have been toying with the idea of changing up my spending tracker, but I don't know, it just works so well, I think I'll regret it if I try to change it up. So it's the same as always, two tables right next to each other, item, cost and category across both of them and I track everything that I buy and then all of that data goes into my overall spending log at the end of the month and it keeps me accountable and sometimes it's a little bit scary but it's always worth tracking finances. This wide PET tape, it's right there in the name, it's wide, so when it doesn't quite fit the areas I want to decorate, I tend to just cut it down and use bits of it, and that works really well. This will be my third month including my meal planner in my journal, and I don't think I could go back now. Even though I don't use it too religiously, it really helps just making me think about what I'm going to eat for the month and what needs to be on my shopping list and then having an idea of what's in my fridge really stops me from just going for the takeaway option every time. Don't get me wrong, I still go for it some of the time, but definitely not as frequently as I was, which is a big help. This doesn't cover the entire month as far as like meals for every day. This is kind of just a four week thing because sometimes, you know, you just have food left in the fridge and you got to finish what you've got and that kind of thing. So having it too rigid doesn't seem like the way for me. I think I did that last month and it sort of was fine, but also I didn't need it to be that. So I feel like this setup, it looks nice, which is always going to be something that makes me more likely to use it. And it's functional enough, you know? I'm refining it every month and making it more functional every month as I use it and work out what the flaws are with it. So it'll probably continue to change until I work out my perfect meal planner layout. But for now, it's doing the job. I hear what you're thinking, Erin, you already set up a monthly calendar, why are you doing a second one? Well, this one is for a specific purpose, this is my content planner. I am a stickler for scheduling out as much of my social media content as I can in advance, which really helps with the whole productivity thing we were talking about earlier. So as I do that, I like to record what I'm scheduling on this calendar so that I can see it at a glance, and it keeps me from doing things like posting two of the same part of my journal like as a reel and as photos right next to each other so that my grid looks nice. It helps me stay on track of where my YouTube videos are and if there's a sponsorship, what the requirements are for that, what I need to do. I also run an Instagram account and a blog for my business, for my photography stuff, which I've kind of been neglecting lately. So I'm hoping for this month that I can get back on top of that, hopefully. Anyway, this calendar is where all of that magic happens and without it, I would be a little lost, I'm pretty sure. And we're down to the very last spread, which is the first weekly for the month of July. I set one up very similar to this in April in one of the live streams, and I loved it, and I loved how it looked when it was all filled in, and I really enjoyed using it, so I thought we'd just return to that and do it again. I can never decide when I'm doing a layout like this if I want to do Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday across the top row, and Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and notes on the bottom, or if it should go Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday on the left page, like I've done here, and then Friday, Saturday, Sunday, notes on the right, because that's kind of more like how you read a book. For some reason, I think the first option actually feels more comfortable to me, but whenever I ask in a live stream, people request this way, so I thought, I'm gonna keep trying it this way and just see how it feels, and if it doesn't feel good, then I will switch back to the way that feels more natural for me. And I'm just going to add some of my stickers around, wrapping around some of the frame stamps and also just hugging the sides of the page to really tie the theme together and make sure that it's looking cohesive across the whole layout. Can you believe it? I'm all set up for July. Thank you so much for planning with me. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to check out the links in the description if you'd like to find out where I got any of this beautiful stuff that I've used. I post new videos every week on Friday evenings Australian time, so hopefully I will catch you in next week's video as well. Until then, stay safe and happy. I hope you have a fantastic week. Bye.